Which, unfortunately, was true. Okay. Yeah! Yeah! the hell? He's coding. Any known allergies? No! Alert? Get the crash cord in here, stat! Come on! By then, quite a crowd had gathered in the yard. There were even a couple of other news reporters. Again, charge it to 360 jewels. And clear. Police, sir. Charge again, 360 jewels. Let's go. Clear. Clear. Still no red. Okay, stop, Jack. Call it. Time of death, six fourteen. When we return, the death of a beloved star sparks disbelief. What? Angels can't die. He said so. When a doctor encounters evidence uh, that all of his expertise has been of no avail, it challenges his uh, deeply held conviction of his own infallibility and of the infallibility of science in general. Uh, each doctor reacts differently to this uh, threat to his deeply cherished illusion. Some become emotional. Didn't you ask him anything in that preliminary exam? Others uh, experience an almost complete emotional withdrawal. I believe I did a thorough intake, but if you'd like to go over my questions, I'd be more than happy to. Which often enrages the more emotional individual, causing him to say things he later regrets. A healthy 28-year-old male comes into this hospital with back trouble, and 45 minutes later, he is dead? Hey! Come on. Keep him overnight. I'll entertain that question. Are you, are you suggesting that I'm at fault? Are you suggesting you're not? Turn that thing off! Fine. All right? Let's go tell him for me. Why don't you go back to the beginning here? Dr. Waters, can we see him? Dr. Waters. Dr. Waters? Right here. Thank you, Dr. Short interview. Well, I want the lab data. I want a medical chart, and I want an immediate autopsy. How the hell did this happen? Gluteal implants. What? Two silicone bags, one implanted in each buttock. Butt implants? As you can see, the right cheek remains firm, while the left cheek is doing that pancake thing. But how could we not have noticed? Probably wasn't that flat when he came in. When Angel Boy fell off the diving board, he appeared to have fallen on his lower spine, inflaming the sciatic nerve. In reality, though, he landed on his left buttock, causing a slight leakage of silicone from the implant bag, and that's what inflamed the sciatic nerve. When Todd Landers arrived in the ER tonight, silicone had begun to pool in the nerve roots of his spine, causing severe pain, an almost exact duplicate of the pain from a ruptured intervertebral disc. Why the hell would anyone have butt implants? So the shot of Demerol. Kaboom. Silicone floods the bloodstream, travels to the lungs, causing cardiac arrest. I popped his implant. If I hadn't given him the shot of Demerol, he could have survived. The MRI would have shown the silicone leak. If I'd asked him specifically if he'd had any implants, he would have known not to give him the shot. Turn that off now. I said turn it off! No problem. Hey, hey, watch the camera, man! There's not a doctor in North America who would have specifically asked if he had butt implants. No one is to blame. You will not say you are to blame. You will not even think of saying that anywhere, ever, outside this room. Do you understand the possible malpractice ramifications here? I mean, you both did what any reasonable doctor would do, and you know it. Whatever doubts you wish to torment yourself with, for God's sake, do it in private. Because unfortunately, we're talking about a very large, large public personality here. 
As the uh, doctor of record, I would like to say how truly sorry we all are that we could not save Mr. Landers. But angels can't die. He said so. Jimmy, no one is ever really dead. You see, Mr. Landers wasn't, uh, <clears throat> well, actually, he wasn't a real angel. What I'm trying to say is, he did die. I'm sorry, kid, I'm sorry. But Dr. McNeil, his buttock was leaking silicone. You didn't examine it closely before giving the lethal injection? I... Closely? I, I certainly looked at his buttock. I had to uh, aim the needle. The man was in agony. I was trying to stop his pain. All right. Uh, the examination was in accord with professional standards. Now, Mr. Landers chose not to inform us of his gluteal implants. If he had chosen to inform us, it's possible he would still be among us today. Oh my God. Listen to yourself. You're, you're blaming him. You, you make a mistake. Now, why is that so hard for you to say? I mean, this is what's wrong with the world. Nobody's able to take responsibility for anything anymore. I mean, just say it. Say you're human, and you screwed up. Uh, this is a gross distortion of the tragic and unforeseeable... Please, please, listen. All of you, you... you you're so terrified of being sued that you're barely human anymore. This has nothing to do with money. It has everything to do with money. It's only about money. I did the preliminary intake on Mr. Landers, and I failed to detect his implants. It was my responsibility to make a diagnosis and my diagnosis was wrong. I take full personal responsibility for the death of Todd Landers. What was that about? I'm damned if I'm going to stand there denying my responsibility just to protect our wallets. That's not what that was about. Isn't it? No, no it's not. Will you excuse us, please? No, it's not. This is a private discussion. Come on. Get out. It's about our credibility as an institution. It's about a guy who on the fifth floor is about to have open heart surgery. You need to know that this is one of the best hospitals in America. What's he supposed to feel? Sitting up there in bed, watching you on TV saying that yes, we killed the guy. We have to believe in the end that the truth is always bad. What truth? There is not a doctor in the world who would have diagnosed body implants. You're contesting this. You may feel responsible, but that is not the same thing as being responsible. Do you understand the distinction between feeling in fact I can only navigate this world on my own moral compass? What about going to this hospital? Is that on your moral compass? This makes you very uncomfortable, doesn't it?